Yeah, thanks. Thanks for having me. You you did get all the consonants in there in a, in a different order, but close enough. Um, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, I'm laughing because it's such a, it's such a mouthful. V M L Y N R. We we get it. We need a few vowels. Um, <laughs> we know. Uh, I only have two only letters through my name. So <laughs> I, I, get I get it. Um, you know, I know. This has been this has the been start, start of many, many, many conversations. conversations. On Friday, on Friday you have a little town hall for your agency. Uh, can uh, you can give you us give a little insight little into what it's like, like right now for you, for you as a CEO? What are you what are you hearing? And, and what are you guys, what are you guys doing? doing? Yeah, you're right. We had a um, and Friday was just one of many um, conversations, forums, meetings uh, that we've had over the last week. And you know, we kind of a week, week and a half ago, really started with a whole set of, you know, actions that, that we needed that were different than what we were doing and, and went through all those and then uh, began to communicate those out, get feedback on them. And, and Friday for me personally, um, you know, it, well, first of all, it was it was after a series of emails and lots of mini meetings and meetings and conversations in the agency. Friday was a moment we said, let's all get together. There's about you know, 1,500 of us in the United States uh, in VML wine are probably a few more. And we literally had almost everybody on one call together in a conversation. And it was, um, I think it was great. It was great to be together as a VML wine, our family and kind of take everything from the outside and just talk as a family. And it was format was a lot of me just saying what was on my mind and how I felt personally, what I'm learning as a person, as a CEO of, of the agency. And the focus was in that particular meeting was on ourselves uh, and what we can do here. And I think, um, you know, it was, it was a chance. It's a, it's a really good family. We've been together a long time, even though there's, there's of course, new people. But I felt really, really comfortable saying what I think um, and, and not being, not reading a corporate statement uh, that, that you'd expect just denouncing racism or, you know, it was, it was much more how, how we're feeling and, and how, not how we're feeling, how I'm feeling. And then the chance to get a lot of reactions, which I've gotten over the, through the weekend and a lot of questions and emails and comments and ideas and debate. Uh, that's for sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, I do um, want to address, address perhaps, perhaps the echo that's echo coming, coming out, out um, to our uh, LinkedIn audience. Thank you for letting, letting, letting us know. know. We are we troubleshooting are that. that. Um, and um, and as we continue this new conversation, conversation uh, uh, what, what, Kind of kind feedback. Of, Can you give us a little bit more specific, John? John, um, you know, what, what are people, people asking for? Uh, yeah, no, that's a good question. So, so all kinds of feedback, and I'm st still going through it. I mean, there's there's hundreds of, of pieces of feedback, which is great. Um, sometimes I find that uh, as one thing I'm learning is one piece of feedback, if you let it, cancels another piece of feedback, and the what you could, you could. Um, you could let those cancel one another, or you could take those two pieces of feedback together and make something different with it. But specifically, um, you know, you could just take it from from lots of different angles. There's there's lots, so I'm not tr didn't, trying to be brief. Um, you know, we t talked about um, letting, giving people some grace on what they when when somebody's trying to make progress and improve themselves, and they say a a word choice that's in flux, and let's give each other some grace on that particular. If, if somebody's trying and the intent is there, let's together work for the grace. I mean, black, white, or any other race. You know, you get feedback that says, I hear what you're saying, but I never want to hear the word um, colorblind from somebody, even if it's accidental, which I totally understand. And that was an example of a word that's getting misused. Or even the hashtag Black Lives Matter, um, which, you know, came under a lot of criticism and how you use it, when you use it, if you're black, if you're white last week. And people were, were confused and were asking for grace on that confusion. Some people would say, I, I hear what you're saying, John, but I don't want that kind of grace for someone that somebody needs to learn. Somebody might say, I completely agree with that. And here's what I can do to do it. You know, the biggest collection of feedback is what, how are we going to you know, change how we hire, promote, retain um, our black community? And that was the, that was the, if I, any common denominator, it's it's actions related to that, questions related to that, or people committing to that, or things as specific as, hey, I know this person, I want to hire them now. Yes, you know. So it was it was it was it was all over the place, all positive, uh, even in the constructive criticism. Right, and right. I and I saw all the feedback at, 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 at 
do you think there <laughs> nice. is a lot more to do? And, yeah, thank you. Um, and and what do, what do other, other holding, holding companies, companies need to do need right, to do now? right are, now? Are 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 that it's that not, it's not just, a just a show? That it's that not it's just not just a feedback, a feedback process, process, but right. real, real have, have lasting last change. change? Well, um, a couple things there. So, do we need to do things? Yeah, we. I am maybe maybe myopic, but a billion percent focused on VML one R and VML one R within WPP. So those two channels of feedback and, and impact is where I have the ability to make the most change. So I haven't thought too much about other holding companies. I do see, you know, I, I, I am a believer in focusing on yourself and what you can do rather than communicating to the world what you're going to do. Or And I do see some holding companies, some agencies focused on communicating to the world um, how, you know, how they think. And we haven't done a lot of that. It's been more on what, what can we do internally. And it's, there's a raft of things that we need to do to me the, the phrase none of it matters is is not the expression but none of it matters unless we're changing how we hire and how we well not just how we hire how the profile of our company looks in terms of a more diverse company and we we have to be and we were just when i think we have progress or just when i think one city's statistically better than another in, in the aggregate it's just woefully short and that that short on that voice and that's that's, that's, by the way, not just black voice, that is lots of voices in diversity. And that I say that without saying we're devoid of that voice. It's just it's just short of where we need to be. So um, I don't know what other holding companies need to do. I know we need to, you know, to be, give you a specific example, there are lots of them, but, you know, there, there needs to be more KPIs or performance indicators on anybody in leadership who's making decisions to have this in their leaderships that we don't have that we just have an expectation that you will do that and and it's not a kpi another thing i think we have a really strong we call it the fearless champions but uh diversity equity and inclusion team it's 90 people big but i find it a touch disconnected from the people who are making hires and the, and and it two wonderful things going on hiring and de and i the two don't touch as closely as they could if i'm being candid but that's not a lack of uh intent or good people it's uh it's, it's life moving on without stopping yourself to really think, are you doing the right things, the good things? Right. And I appreciate, right. and I appreciate um, you being cat you being cat with uh, our uh, chief strategy officer, he wrote he for us and for us and for, us and and for, doing and for the weekend, the weekend. And, and he really he talked really about, talked about this otherness and the advertising industry. And what do we need to do with that leadership? Um, and what do we need to do with hiring? Um, what's your kind of response to, to, you know, how he's spoken up in the time at, at the agency, um, and what it really means to, to connect and have, um, black voices and diverse voices at the table in the C-suite? Yeah, I, I, you got a little cut off. Sorry about that. Is it, did you say, uh, you talk about Yusuf's article today? Yes. His, yes. his okay. wonderful yeah. piece yeah. in our voice column. Yeah. I, I thought that's what you meant. Um, yeah, I... Completely agree with him. First of all, Yusuf is is wonderful. Whenever he wants to make an impactful point, he 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 makes it very personal. He will never just give you um, generic thought. It it always come and 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 I guess who would? Well, I see a lot of generic thought out there. I think what Yusuf does really well is he always brings it a hundred percent from personal reflection. And there's no doubt about that when you read or listen to Yusuf, and I appreciate that. Uh, because it gives you a sense of where he's coming from on that, even in a short article like the one on, on Adweek. And to answer your second question, I, I completely agree with him. I think one of his biggest points, as I take it to read it, um, is presence is critical. Presence of black voices in agencies, not just, but it's not just presence, it is power. And it's one thing, I think a lot of people will be chasing numbers and statistics, just like um, I think a lot of agencies have probably done with with gender and with and, and with this topic before, um, I, th I think that will be we'll be selling ourselves short if we're if people are trying to um, if they're honest themselves check boxes and things like that. It, it's it's it has to be in your heart to not only have the right amount of diversity, but diversity with impact, the ability to to shape the work, to make the hires, to make decisions about the agency. Yusuf's in a position to do that, but as he would tell you in our agency. Um, He's one of very few um, um, in in that position, and that's that's what has to change. And I'm just being really candid with you. 
Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Is this, is this a, a problem, problem that you're, that seeing, you're seeing across, across the locations? locations? I mean, you have I mean, offices, offices in London, in London, London Sao, Paulo, Sao Paulo as global CEO. Um, is there a, a diversity, um, lack of diversity in across agencies, perhaps, um, that we are all awakening to, that we are all reckoning? Sorry, I'm hoping I'm hoping you can hear me okay. Um, um, yes and no. I, I think I think as an agency leader in a in a company that's relatively big, especially after we've merged together in VML Wine R, I mean, there's seven thousand people around the world, and you can you can look at the company makeup and you can sort of rock yourself to sleep that it's diverse because it's diverse in terms of Chinese, uh, Latin American, you know, Hispanic, um, white, black, men, women. Um, every nationality in between it's a it's so so on one level one of my favorite things about working at vml wine are or an agency that's global is the diversity and the voice 100 percent true that perspective that i've gotten from having every country involved in the voice and the decisions and the leadership on that level absolutely it's 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 wonderful and it's been one of the my favorite things of, of the career one of my favorite things about working here um on another level, when you double click into that, the, the, the diversity within any one country as it relates to that country's makeup is where we would fall you know, shorter than I would want it to be, uh, far shorter than I'd want it to be. And that's when you start to speak to um, mix of black community voices in VML YR in North America. And you could even uh, start to think it's right because some of our cities are way more uh, advanced within the company. But it's it kind of depends on how you choose to look at it. And uh, I don't, I, I feel like I don't want to, to uh, sort of get, take, uh, just take the overall global diversity of international diversity and make that a proxy for diversity within a country where we have to change dramatically. And that's not just true for America. That's true in, in how we are in, in Brazil, you know, uh, that's how true we are in, in South Africa. There's, there's diversity within each country that we need to look at even if the overall diversity of the company is international. Right. right. And the clients, and the clients um, as, um, well, as well as the well, needs, needs are different are across different. countries um, and campaigns. I guess, you know, I wonder how you're looking at your communication that you have externally uh, with those clients in terms of diversity. Um, do you expect to see or is it already happy having that client or more, um, um, more cognizant, cognizant of, of um, the lack of diversity, lack of diversity and we can and do, we do as a team as collaborators, collaborators um, as, as mess message messages. messages. Mm -hmm. um, sp speaking just from personal uh, observation over not just the last week, but you know, through time, but especially the last couple of weeks, I've found the, you know, clients and brands we're working with are, are first, I, I think, as they should be focused on the decision making and, the, and the, their own diversity um, and and expecting us to, to, to be progressive in that change and to progressive in how we think about that. And that, again, that's not just um, I didn't just start last week um, and I didn't just start with George Floyd. That's that's been, I think, a, a good press by most of our clients on themselves for, for some time. Which I think is good, obviously intensified, um, and but it's it's been more of a focus on themselves and their their conversations with us about more about how what's the appropriate response for them when they want to be authentic, they want to be true, but maybe sometimes they don't have as much truth that they that they want to represent, and how how to how to do that. It's been more of that, and then the second thing has been putting the pressure on us to make sure the teams that are working on their business are diverse and, and representative. And I, I've, I've, I, that's a pressure that we welcome. Uh, hopefully we have enough pressure on ourselves um, bef before that pressure comes from a client partner. But, um, you know, in, in we haven't found ourselves in diametric opposition of, of any of our client partners. I think the reason a client and an agency are together, if they've they found some success and some, some similarity together, but in that similarity, um, you can find some comfort and you have to, you have to push, push yourself. So. Right. right. Find, find um, um, comfort and collaboration. So discomfort um, and the kind of slow, long journey um, of progress. I, I want to leave you um, with the last question of 
um, I know you're still sifting through feedback and, you know, thinking about what to do, but what can you kind of, you know, to our Adweek community um, commit to in for the, for the rest of the year going forward in terms, in terms of, of dealing with diaper for the for future. future? Yeah. I mean, I think, I think my personal commitments are, are all, you know, internal and I, I'm happy to commit to the, to the Adweek community. I mean, my, my personal passion and commitment to this to, to be specific and I, but I hope I hope those commitments are known and first known internally and, um, and and known by the people who know me and know I think us as a, as a company but um, as it ever to specifically answer your question you know we're we, we had lots of, of programming and awareness and narratives and forums that have to happen internally I'm very pleased with that but it's the commitment that I want to focus most on is, is how we hire and who makes those hires and to, to dramatically change the way we think about that and not to get not to get trapped in feeling like things are changing just because we're creating awareness and education i don't i want to do those things uh, and we will do those things and they are critically important i think the trap we can fall ourselves into if we could fall into not not just me but one could fall into is mistaking those things for the real thing, which is at the end of the day, is your company look differently than it needs to. And that my commitment is to focus on on the latter. And the other commitment is to open up the voices that have the discussion about how we're going to do that. Because, you know, in a lot of agencies, you've got the people sitting around making those decisions or having those ideas are the predominantly white executive teams of an agency, sadly. And I'm speaking generally, there's massive uh, differences between agencies. And a lot of agencies have that, and then they have a diversity and equity and inclusion team. Those those things being completely separate, it's just a it's that's that will be an endless cycle of of what, where we've got ourselves so far. And I think some of the biggest actions that we've discussed in the last week have come because somebody who's not in, currently in that leadership team or even in the DE and I part of the organization, just somebody with a voice comes forward and says, "Here's an idea I'd like to do. We're gonna we're gonna." close VML wine R on, on Juneteenth um, week from Friday and and celebrate that as a as a day of coping that was not an idea that we've it's that's something we've never done before and frankly I never would have thought of whether that's sad or not if I would have thought it or not the truth is I probably wouldn't have thought of it uh, if I'm being honest with myself um, a black man in an organization said I think it's important we have a day of coping and what if we did that on Juneteenth and before it even becomes a success or a, a something we do well or not well here in this agency, it's already been successful because now 100% of the agency knows what that day even is. And I can guarantee mm -hmm. you a lot of people, the, 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 the sad, sad fact that there are very few people, uh, including myself, knew much about that particular day as much as they should um, is a change. But we could, we could sit here and not do it because we didn't know what it was or because it's just one, ta one tactic, one thing to do. Or we can lean into it and do it and do it the right way. And I'm really, you know, it's one of a hundred things, but it's just a good example of something that wouldn't have existed if we hadn't opened up the voice to what we need to do. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I want to thank, well, our, thank our, audience our audience for listening for in. And I want to thank, thank people, people who are speaking up. Um, I want to thank the, the folks that let us know about our technical issues. We do apologize for that and hope it got remedied uh, during this during, conversation. Sorry about that. And I absolutely yeah, want to thank John, 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 Global CEO, CEO of VML and R for your R time. You got it. Thanks, Kat. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. absolutely. And yeah, next week, next we are week continuing the Adweek Together, Together series. Uh, we are going to be joined by Dave Newey uh, from IBM Watson Media and Weather to talk about the future of brand trust. So we hope that you'll tune in uh, next Tuesday. And in the meantime, if you would like unlimited access to our content, conversations, and resources, you can grab a Adweek Pro subscription at adweek.com slash offer. My name is Ko Im. Uh, I hope your conversations at work and at home continue in a peaceful, productive way. Thanks so much.